We will call the February 12th meeting of the Carolina County Board of Supervisors to order. Uh, let the record state that Supervisor Jeff Black representing the Western Carolina District, Supervisor Jeff Sealy representing Bowling Green, Supervisor Reginald Underwood uh, representing Reedy Church, Supervisor Calvin Taylor representing Port Royal, and I'm Floyd Thomas representing the Mountain Pinot District. Our first order of business will be uh, invocation. Mr. Underwood, would you do the invocation followed by the Pledge of Allegiance, which will be led by the county's uh, newest Eagle Scout? Can we all stand, please? <clears throat> Most gracious and Heavenly Father, once again we come before you asking for your divine blessing on our meeting this evening. Heavenly Father, we ask you to give us wisdom, give us knowledge, give us insight. Continue to help us to do the business of Caroline County. Ask you, Heavenly Father, to continue to bless our men and women overseas, bless those who, who are here to protect and serve us. These and all blessings we ask in your precious name. Amen. 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 And now Mr. Uh, Peterson, young Mr. Peterson, along with uh, Mr. Davis, would come down. Mr. Peterson is on the agenda later, but we're going to put him to work first. He is the county's uh, newest Eagle Scout. So if you would, lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much, Mr. Peterson and Mr. Miles. And uh, you'll be right back in a minute. Any minutes to the agenda? We'd like to get a little more information there's, for the board. There's for further, that. right? There's further information being gathered before that's presented to the board. Uh, no other changes to the agenda. Uh, no, sir. Thank you. At this point, opening board comments, Mr. Black. Yeah, I have uh, a few. Um, first of all, I want to uh, I thank uh, Kevin Whiteman, um, uh, law firm of Sands Anderson, um, as well as uh, the lawyer who represented us uh, and Neil Cosby. Um, fellow supervisors for appropriating money uh, to fight the uh, rate increase by Aqua Virginia uh, back in June. Um, we, uh, <clears throat> we got a result finally uh, in about mid-January um, and it wasn't, even though it wasn't exactly what we wanted, uh, we appreciate the support from the county. Um, they got about 1.2 million of the 1.5 million that they had asked for increase, so about a $300,000 less than they wanted. Um, so we appreciate it and uh, for those of you um, in the who aren't familiar in the western part of the district, Lake Landor area, um, a family of four, probably average water sewer bill is around about $150 a month um, under Aqua Virginia. So um, that was what we were fighting in court, and um, we will continue to uh, fight that as, as long as they are um, keep on upping the bills on us. Uh, second thing, <clears throat> I want to uh, personally thank all of those who supported uh, and were out, came out for, I know Major Mosier went in the water, um, the superintendent, all the people from the county who went in for the polar bear plunge. Um, it's a uh, great thing for the county, uh, for the community to come together to support those who are in need. Um, and it was, a, it was a really, really fun event. Uh, finally, um, I will be having a uh, constituent meeting on um, this coming Monday, uh, February 18th, with a special guest, Congressman Rob Whitman. Um, and that meeting will take place um, at from uh, 6 o'clock to 7.30 um, in C County Line Baptist Church and from 7.30 to 8.45 in the uh, Heritage Clubhouse in Lake Landor and all county residents are welcome to attend. Um, there'll be a lot of discussion there for uh, Mr. Whit Congressman Whitman. So if you have questions on national issues, uh, please come out. Thank you. Mr. Seeley. I have none, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Underwood. Yes, Mr. Chairman, I do have several. Um, my first uh, comment is um, I had an opportunity to read the Caroline Progress over the last few days, and I was kind of taken aback by some of the comments regarding the board's trip to several board members' trip to the homestead. Um, I don't think the board or the board members determine where this meeting is held, and I think it's a worthwhile event, or I don't think the state would, would hold this meeting. So. Um, I'm kind of taken aback by 
the, the phrase that the board feels entitled to certain privileges. It just doesn't sit well with me at all. So I, I do want to voice that. Um, and I think it's, it, this meeting occurs every year. Our sheriff goes to the meetings for the sheriff. Mr. Cully, I'm sure you attend several meetings for the county. It's just a normal process of doing business. So I say either we're going to do business or we're not going to do business. I don't think the state would hold this meeting unless there was some worthwhile material to be discussed. So that was my first concern. My second concern is after we held a vote last week um, regarding a gentleman's business, I received several phone calls of why the business should not be approved. But no one voiced a concern during the planning process when they went to the planning commission, nor did they come before this board and say that they disagreed with this gentleman being able to expand his business. So I want to make it clear that every citizen has a right to come before this board and dis, um, voice your displeasure when there's something that's coming to the county. But once the horse is out of the barn, it's kind of late to call me and say that you disagreed when you did not come to this board or the Planning Commission and say that you disagreed. So those are my two comments, Mr. Chairman. I'm sorry I took a little more time than I should have. That's all right. Thank you very much, Mr. Underwood. Mr. Taylor? Uh, yes. Uh, just as always, it's good to see so many people out at the meeting. Um, that's the way you become informed, and we're glad to have you. Uh, secondly, I would say that I have two district meetings planned. I have two district meetings planned um, on the 5th of March, which is the first Tuesday, at the Woodford Precinct, uh, and that meeting is for Port Royal uh, District uh, citizens. However, anyone who would like to uh, attend, please feel free uh, to do so. And on the 7th, which is that Thursday, um, at the Port Royal, uh, fire department, I would uh, plan a meeting there. So um, it's just an opportunity for citizens to come out and to hear what's going on, to uh, voice your opinion. I always say that our meetings of this uh, kind aren't designed for dialogue. Uh, but when you come to the district meetings that we hold, you have an opportunity to speak and to ask questions and to have your uh, voice heard. So uh, remember those two dates and I hope to see you there. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Taylor. Uh, I have just a couple of uh, comments for VDOT, which I'll say. One is I did want to, uh, I guess, recognize a former Planning Commission member, Mr. Thomas Ball, who passed away last week. He served the county for uh, I believe it was eight years on the, on the Planning Commission, and, and we will truly miss him. He was a inspiration and a, and a source of uh, many ideas for the county. So we will miss him and uh, have his family in, in our prayers. Uh, that was it for opening board comments. At this point in time, if I could ask Christopher Scott Peterson, Jr. and his family, if they would come forward, family and friends. And I have, while they come forward, you're going to make your way all the way to the stage. So I have a resolution that the board adopted at our uh, January meeting. And I'm just going to read it while they come forward. It's, it's a resolution commending Christopher Scott Peterson, Jr. for achieving the rank of Eagle Scout. Whereas Christopher Scott Peterson, Jr., a homeschooled high school junior who resides in Carmel Church, will be presented with the Eagle Scout Award at the Court of Honor ceremony on February 3rd. And whereas Mr. Peterson is a member of Troop 173 of Bowling Green and is the son of Christopher Scott Peterson Sr. and Meredith Peterson, and whereas Mr. Peterson earned 53 merit badges and served as a leader of his troop on his way to becoming an Eagle Scout and plans to pursue a career in the medical field. And whereas Mr. Peterson's major service project consisted of leading fellow scouts and others in constructing Osprey net, nest platforms for the Southern Maryland Audubon Society, one of which the troop plans to place in the Rappahannock River Valley 
National Wildlife Refuge, and whereas the Board of Supervisors wishes to recognize Mr. Peterson for his impressive achievements and contributions to the county, now therefore be it resolved that the Caroline County Board of Supervisors hereby congratulates and commends Christopher Scott Peterson, Jr. for the hard work and leadership he exhibited in achieving Eagle Scout rank and extends its best wishes for continued success in the future. So let's give him a hand. All right, so we have given you the resolution, but for the sake of photo photographs and Mark and whatnot, I'm gonna just hold this one. You've got the original with you, which I appreciate you having to bring. So that was for you. This we're just gonna have you hold like that. Okay. You wanna get in the middle? We'll let him get in the middle. I'm part of the family. I'm over here spam. Okay. Every 30 years. Go right ahead, Mark. He, he has the frame one that he brought. You don't want him to hold it? Oh, that's fine. We're going to get his head. And all those merit badges. <laughs>
Um, let's stay here, guys, because we have um, we have recognition of former members of the Social Services Board. Who's our social? Your Social Services Board, right? Okay. Am I supposed to have them? All right, we have Dolores Brown, Francine Whitaker, and Pamela Gardner. If you three will come forward, please. Did I? Wayne's not here. Calvin, I need you. Jeff, you can substitute for Wayne. Does that work? Okay. I have. Uh, that was kind of appropriate. I have a resolution that 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 recognizes uh, each of the three ladies I just mentioned. Dolores Brown, Francine Whitaker, and Pamela Gardner for their service on the Caroline County Social Services Board. And it says, whereas Dolores Brown served as the Mattapanai District Representative to the Social Services Board from March 25th, 2003 through June 30th, 2012, and whereas during her tenure she served with compassion and distinction and worked diligently to improve the lives of her fellow citizens, and whereas Caroline County has benefited from Mrs. Brown's leadership and dedication. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Caroline County Board of Supervisors extends its appreciation to Mrs. Brown, Mrs. Whitaker, and Mrs. Gardner uh, for her service to the county and extends its best wishes to her and her family on contributing success and future endeavors. So, let's give them a round of applause, too, ladies. So, Dolores Brown, she's from the Mattapanai District. Big hand. <laughs> You're just in time. Mrs. Whitaker's from the Madison District. <laughs> and Mrs. Gardner from Port Royal. Thank you very much. Thank you. He's a professional. Right in the middle here. We'll let you three go and then we'll climb on behind you. Do it that way. Do we play about an hour? Do we play about an hour? Yes, You done? All right, can we glom on, y'all? Can you guys, if you just take a step forward, we'll stand behind you again. Wayne? That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Okay. Mr. Peterson, if you and your family would like to leave, you don't have to stay. We do appreciate you coming, and we understand you've got, you know, dif different commitments. So, thanks for being here. <coughs> and now to continue with the board's good news, we've got our VDOT report. Yes, sir.
Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, Mr. Cully. Uh, my name is Gary Duvall, and I'll speak about a couple projects, and then I'll open it up to the floor to see if you have some things that VDOT can help you with. Um, just last week, we shifted traffic on the 301 bridge, and hopefully you get a chance to ride across it. And it's uh, halfway complete, so VDOT is very excited about that project, and it seems to be moving along well. We've continued with the 207 bridge work, and that looks to be complete the 1st of May of this year. I'm excited about that. And then we put the bridge deck yesterday, a couple days ago, on Route 644 bridge over Marsa Kosick Creek. Apologize for probably mispronouncing it, but uh, we've got that bridge deck put in, and that should be complete in June of this year. A couple of questions that we had last time that we worked on, we went back and looked at Jericho Road, and it still looks like Jericho Road, the, the uh, posting of the speed limit is there. As we talked about before, how we do speed studies kind of encourages to be increased, but uh, we'll continue keeping a look at it, and uh, we'd like to, if you notice anything different, we'd certainly like to get back with you and see if there's anything that we need to address. Um, Mr. Taylor, you talked about that uh, there's concern about VDOT reviewing Stonewall Jackson Road uh, there for some guardrail. We've gone ahead and started that study and we hope to be finished within about two weeks. And we'd like to get back with you and maybe meet you out there and look and look at some things and we'll go through Mr. Colley's office to make sure that everything's okay. But we want to take a look at that. And then we looked at some issues for Mr. Thomas. Uh, the concern regarding the pedestrian crosswalk there on 207 business there at the food line in McDonald's. We're planning to put back one crosswalk there to get from the, to that area over to the apartments. And we'd like to put in a flashing light with that. Uh, we're working with the town of Bowling Green also and uh, kind of coordinate the effort. And then they've also asked us to put, to look at doing an, an additional crosswalk to the north at Anderson Street. So we're talking about pedestrian crosswalks are a safety issue, but we need to make sure that we don't have too many because traffic, you know, is our most concern, and we want to make sure that we're, we're safe when we do that. So we're kind of coordinating that effort with them, and we'll share with you as we move forward with that project. Uh, notification I got last time that there was a speed limit sign that was knocked down on Patterson Lane near relocated 4652 that leads into Loves there in Carmel, Carmel Church. Um, we could not find any record that there is a sign missing there. Um, not saying that that is not correct. The only speed limit that we can post is 55. VDOT does not recommend that we post it at 55. So we'd rather not do that if it's okay with you. Okay. All right. Residents have requested that we install no jack braking signs. Right. And... Those signs, VDOT does not recommend that they use those signs, and so we therefore do not post those signs because we feel it is an enforcement issue. Uh, there is a sign today on Route 3 as you go into Fredericksburg that encourages people to not do that, but please understand that is a City of Fredericksburg sign, not a VDOT sign. So we have felt and we've worked with the state police and local bodies that is really an enforcement issue as regarding noise versus the actual jack breaking itself. So, so what you're saying, Mr. Duvall, is the county could put their own sign up there? Uh, no, sir. No, it's a VDOT uh, jurisdiction, so no, sir. But we, the city of Fredericksburg could put their sign up there? In their jurisdiction. Why is so They that? maintain their own streets. And oh, so I was waiting for you to say right. that. Okay. So we can get all to right. the point where Caroline can That's all right. Thank you. No, 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 that's okay. right. No. <laughs> but if a sign were to appear there, that's a whole other story, right? Um... Okay, guys. Thank you. No comment. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Duvall. I understand. Okay. Okay. I understand. Okay, we're just trying to make sure that, that you know, there is a Certainly. amount of safety there. And exactly. The safety right. There. Exactly. Now, I have begun working with Virginia Logos regarding the lighting and signage issue on the loop road leading to Loves. And we'll probably get back with you at a later time and talk about that to make sure that it does does meet your needs and also what we can do with that. A uh, very good group, and uh, they've worked diligent to get the signs that are up there now. We understand the concern for loves, but we'd like to talk about a few issues with you before we move forward with that. Okay. Likewise, we'll go through Mr. Culley's office on that. And I think that pretty much 
wraps up the comments. Well, we, we talked about a pavement condition on Route 207 business that 301 appears suspect. We've gone ahead and looked at that. There's two slightly different pavement mixes that VDOT used in that area. Right. And so the pavement itself is okay. It's just a different type of texture. So that does kind of give you a, 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 a different understanding of it. But we've checked it, and it's okay. Well, this was not, not pavement mixture changes. This was actually surface cracking. I, there was a contractor that did some work there. I think he did asphalt from the stoplight back to the quickie mark. Correct. And there was a lot of cracking there. I, right after you were here, I saw some people there making patches. And right, things. exactly. So, yes, we've definitely okay. we've done some work. And then we've done the center line. There was Route 2 had some center line missing and some different things there. So we put back all the, li the lines that we found that were missing there. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. So, so we thank you. Thank you, Mr. Duvall. Um, I'm sure board, the board has some questions for you. Okay. If you give us Great. another minute. Mr. Certainly. Black? Thank you. Okay. Um, I've called you guys on a few occasions now about trash pickup along, uh, uh, I guess, Route 639. Um, and I'm wondering, what, how, far, um, how far off the road do you guys pick up? I guess, I mean, what is, what is when you have the trash pickup, what do you say is the distance of the trash pickup? We're responsible for what's called right away. And we have records that show pretty much the road that we own, per se. Um, the Bird Act came through in 1932 and said every road in the state of Virginia was 30 feet wide. And the way you measured it was from 15 foot from center line over into the property. And as we progressed, you know, we have a lot of different varied locations. And so what we try to do is keep a, you know, when we have a request, we go out and figure out exact, roughly where the right of way is, and then we collect to that location, if that kind of makes sense. Okay, all right. Um, the second thing is on the trash pickup, if you don't mind, because um, I know uh, it, it takes a while when I call in, they'll say it could be a couple weeks. Could right. you, do you guys mind calling, I don't know if the other supervisors request this, um, but as well, like when you're gonna, the day you're gonna do it, or the day before you're gonna do it, to, uh, to call to say it's gonna, you know, that it's gonna happen on this day, um, you know, in advance, or, you know, I mean, if, if you're going two weeks out, uh, the day before you're going to do it, just give me a call and say, look, we're going to clean up tomorrow. Is that, is that a possibility? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Um, I appreciate that. And then the final thing is, um, I guess about two months ago, I had a constituent with a concern on the traffic light. I guess it was before Christmas on uh, Route 1 and 639 yes, sir. in the mornings. Um, and I got a call back when you guys said you had fixed the, the issue. Um, the other morning, I was actually running late to work, and the line was... I don't know if you're familiar with that area, but the line was back to Lewis and Clark Elementary School from Route 1. Okay. Um, and so that's, um, you know, that good was, ways. Yes. that's quite a ways okay. um, back. So I was just wondering what the, what the concern was there, so, I mean, or, or what the issue is. So if you could well, look the at that. Well, the controller, we'll, we'll be glad to look at the controller again. And okay. See what it's doing. Sometimes they can act funny. So. All right. Thank yep. you. Sure. Mr. Seeley? I just want to say uh, how nice the 301 bridge is. I drive over it twice a day. Yes, sir. And the, work, the, the workers there have been amazing in barricading so that nobody got pelted with their jackhammering the of, those, right. of those center pilings that they're getting rid of. But they've done a f phenomenal job, and the road is great. Well, thank you, sir. And I have no issues this time around. Great. Right. Thank, thank you. you. Mr. Underwood? Yes, sir. Mr. Duvall, I have a concern um, regarding old uh, Frog Level Road. The speed limit there is 45. It's at, from um, 301 back to the trash dump there. Um, I had a young lady call me. She has a son who's hearing impaired there, lives on that road, and 45 does seem, it's a very short road, but it, um, maybe we could look at that sure. speed there. Be glad um, to. Families there, a lot of children on that road. With yes, sir. Okay. And um, that may be a little excessive, 45. If we could okay. knock that back to 35, that would be... What we do, we kind of look at it where they're doing a traffic study because a lot of times traffic study is, is kind of our worst enemy, mm -hmm. and, you know, with, with stuff like that. So let's, let's look at it and okay. we'll get back with you. Thank you. Sure. Ms. Akers. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, several months ago, I asked about uh, looking at the, the intersection of, of the same intersection that Mr. Black spoke about. Uh, the, there is a convenience store on the corner there, on the northeast corner. Yes, sir. Uh, 639 and Route 1. Uh, that is a driveway that either you can go in or out yep. of just a short distance from the, the light. Right. 
Uh, in fact, just this evening, I had a meeting earlier, uh, just north of Lady Smith, and there, were, there was a car going in and a car coming out, and here I was making the turn to go up Route 1, and we all almost collided there. Wow. Uh, if nothing else, can we look at putting some of those um, cones or those round uh, rails that you put in, in the roadway there at least up a ways so that you okay. can not cross over on the entrance the closest to the light. At okay. least you have to go up beyond uh, to, to the last in, uh, okay. entrance to, to exit. All right. We'll be glad because, to take a look at I mean, it was just uh, really and true by, by the grace of God that, that we all wow. three didn't mm -hmm. collide this, uh, right. this evening. After, it was about almost dark, you know. Wow. And okay. so uh, we just need all to right. do something with that. Yes, sir. But this is the third time I've asked about it. Okay. And I just do not keep getting a response. And I'm not okay. sure whether you're looking at it or just what you're doing with it. Yeah. Glad to take a look at it. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Taylor? Um, the only thing, uh, you said you were looking at the guardrail situation. And yes, sir. I look forward to hearing from okay. you uh, on that. Okay, thank, thank you, you. All right, Mr. Duvall, the only thing that I had was uh, one of our subdivisions, the Belmont subdivision, yes, sir. 207 and... Well, not quite Route 1, but in that area, 20795, I think you know where it is. Yes, sir. There are some internal issues there, and, uh, sidewalk cracking, curb and gutters and things yes, of sir. that nature. Yep. Um, I have a list I'll forward to you. Okay. I mean, if that'll work. That'd this is great. a case where the HOA, right. I think, is supposed to work directly with VDOT. Right. Um, but, of course, we get involved. Oh, absolutely. You know, at times. So I'm, okay. I'm just trying to pass that along and make sure we... Uh, okay. Stay coordinated there. And I, I will say, Mr. Duval, I, I mentioned this to you and you in the audience before. Yes, sir. Uh, you have done a very good job for Caroline County. Um, I, I am known for my honesty, and I will tell you if VDOT doesn't do a good job, and I have said that before you got here, but as far as, as your response to the county's needs, you've done a great job, and it's been our pleasure to work with you. So please don't go anywhere, okay? Okay. All right. I don't plan on it. So. All right. Thank you very much. Thanks. Okay. I, th I think that's it, Mr. Duvall. Okay. We look forward to seeing you, what, in a couple of months or yes, three, three yes, months? Yes, sir. Okay. Well, okay. Thank, thank, thank you very much. Appreciate the help. Thanks. Okay. Now, before we go to the Art Center proposal, well, I'll give you a chance to get set up. I need to go back and do a thing. Um, one of my opening board comments was supposed to be acknowledgement of a resolution that we received from the school board. Um, I passed it out to the board members. It should be on, on your table. Uh, I got this today. Uh, at our meeting with the school board, our two on two, Mr. Akers and I were in attendance with uh, Ms. Carson and Mr. Spaulding. And they are basically, or they basically passed a resolution that says they would like to move forward uh, to issue general obligation bonds for the county to pay for improvements to the school system. Uh, I'm asking Mr. Cully to find the process for a referendum for. Uh, school bonds, and we are going to follow up with a meeting with the schools on the 26th, where they will present their entire capital improvement plan to the county. We'll discuss that so we can continue to pursue a referendum on school capital improvements. But that's the resolution we got. Um, Eric, I guess I'll give you one in a break. So we're ready. I'll give you a second to get, to get set up. Ms. Beard, I'll give you a second to get set up. Um, I'm ready, sir. Certainly. We are. The production. <laughs> okay, you're going to make a big production, but let me get some popcorn. Certainly. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, and certainly senior staff. Uh, we appreciate the opportunity to come before you this evening and discuss what we hope is a very exciting opportunity for the county, and that would be the county's art center. What has occurred, and there will be several discussions of it shortly, is that through the gracious offerings of the National Park Service, we have been provided with an opportunity to house 13 Sidney King paintings here in Caroline County. 
two of which we have in front of you this evening that will be unveiled shortly by Mr. Stoddard, who is a member of the county's IDA as well as on staff with the National Park Service. Additionally, in the audience for us this evening, we have Mr. Collins here as, chair, as president of Caroline's Historical Society, and we have Mayor Stork representing the Bowling Green Arts Commission and members of their board of directors as well. What we'd like to talk with you about is an opportunity to display these 13 Sydney Kings, to house an art center concept, and to be able to provide for the Caroline Historical Society to stay in the building and also display some of their um, wonderful collection. The Caroline County Industrial Development Authority has pledged funds to invest in the building, in the Commissioner of Revenue building, the um, camera system as well as the alarm system. This investment by the IDA will allow for this art center to take place in the building and to protect the Historical Society and the Arts Commission exhibits. The Bowling Green Arts Commission was established in 2007 and has received a grant from the state every year as well as matching fund, funds from the town and their membership is encompassed through the entire county. Through the Historical Society, they have been in the building for several years. Their collection was moved to the vault area. This arrangement that we're talking about is provided in your packet would allow for the Historical Society to have the vault area of that building, to put cases with their display in the meeting space, and then the Arts Commission to be able to operate an art center throughout the building. We believe that this is a great opportunity to assist in the further development of the arts. The Caroline County School System also has participated with the Bowling Green Arts Commission for several years in art shows and things like that that they have held in Bowling Green. By utilization of this facility, we're bringing all of these groups together, creating an art space surrounded by the Sydney Kings that we will unveil in just a few minutes. As your packet denotes, we are suggesting a governance for the project and certainly inviting uh, members of each one of the participants to be seated, if it's your desire, on this governance group. This group would be sure to maintain the integrity of the facility as well to explore the opportunities of various art that would be uh, supplied for the building. So with the school participation, the Bowling Green Arts Commission, we would be sure that things that were allowed at the school system would also be allowed throughout the building. We are anticipating that these paintings would be provided on a five-year uh, loan by the Park Service and an arrangement that then can be expanded by the county and the Park Service at that particular time. So as you'll see from your packet, we've proposed several different attachments including a space design for the building. We've had meetings with both the Historical Society as well as the Bowling Green Arts Commission to decide just how the space would be utilized, where different things would go, and how we would certainly provide for the Sydney Kings. So with your indulgence, Mr. Chairman, I would like to invite John Stoddard to the podium to take the next step with the Park Service and to actually unveil these paintings. Give us a second and let Mark get in position. Okay. Mark, if you would, because I know you want to make sure everything is right. So I want you to be in position when they do the unveiling and everybody's. You can come back here if you need to. Well, first of all, gentlemen, let me say it's a pleasure to come before you this evening without a controversial issue <laughs> that we usually deal with. But uh, it's nice that uh, we have a chance to come and the Park Service has a chance to uh, offer these uh, for the beginning of the Arts Center. Um, we've taken these uh, pieces, Sidney King pieces, off the uh, battlefields for years and put them in storage and as uh, I put each one of them in there I was afraid that they weren't going to see the light of day again and I called Gary and said uh, is there any place in Caroline 
that we could have a venue uh, to show these pieces. And uh, he said, brought up with the new uh, arts museum, and I hope that uh, we can get these in there and have these as a foundation. Most of these, most of the paintings that Sidney King did for us were for the battlefields, the uh, four major battlefields in uh, Pennsylvania. And uh, one of the most important ones that, uh, of course, relates to us in Caroline is the uh, reign of Stonewall Jackson down to Fairfield uh, Plantation mm -hmm. in May of 1863. And this is the rival of uh, General Jackson at Guinea Station. Thank you, sir. All right. Can we turn these around? They're still yours, so if you break them. Now these have been in storage for oh, approximately seven years. For years, for 27 years, basically I went out on the field in the summer times and Sydney had come up with a wax um, that every summer we would wax these. And they really do get a nice uh, glow to them and patina to them once they're freshly waxed and all. It'll be a nice foundation for the uh, for the art center. I know that there's uh, that there's a number of these that Herb Collins has that uh, they were on acrylics on canvas. I think they're displayed down in the, uh, right now there's a display at the Essex Museum. All right. Is that good for you? That's good for us as far as the paintings and the unveiling. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm sure the board has some questions of the uh, tourism director and economic development about the actual details of the project. And John, you said part of this is, is the uh, Park Service would like the county to insure these. That's the, uh, I'll let Gary address that. I think that's already, that issue's already been taken care of. Mr. Chairman, uh, we have uh, worked with Katrina Price. Uh, she indicates that our insurance uh, company already recognizes these as within our insurance policy. Really? Mm -hmm. We wanted to have those answers for you uh, tonight. So that, uh, the $3,000 in value per painting, $39,000 altogether, 
Uh, it is within our current policy.